Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. Uh, if you are as crazy of a uh, How I Met Your Mother fan as my wife and I are, you are looking at your screen right now and going, Victoria was robbed. She was robbed, and that's bullshit. Uh, but you may also know my guest tonight from being an incredible actor, writer, um, a retired doula. Okay. Uh, and from the Jim Gaffigan show. Yeah, she's pretty, she's pretty spectacular. She is also a mom of two. Ashley Williams. And now she's in LA. Hi. California. We were just, hello. I am. Hello. I know. Hello. I know. We were just chatting before we started filming that she's very concerned that New York is not going to function without her. And I feel, I feel like you're right. I mean, let's face it. I think I was pretty, yeah, I think I was pretty integral to how things worked around there. Um, and now that I've moved back to LA, I'm really not sure that everyone's going to be okay there without me. So well, I'm gonna have good to luck. Take it, like the date that you moved, because we don't know each other personally, but I'm sure there was a day where I felt a great loss and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. I will tell you, it was March 2020. <laughs> I don't know if anything else in your life went wrong <laughs> around that time but I don't think that's a coincidence <laughs> oh so all right well you know everybody's been trying to figure out where did COVID come from and like we have Apparently. a small but mighty following that I think might blow up from this information because yeah it wasn't the bath yeah <laughs> it's you it was me okay yeah, but I didn't do it on purpose <laughs> anyway we're gonna <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah, thanks for this pandemic. What I'm trying to say is I miss New York is the point here. I miss New York and it's I'm I I do love LA, but um I was born in New York and I had I I um I lived there for a long time. I did a lot of great fun stuff there and um I also needed to come back um, to LA where things are a little bit more calm yeah. um, because New York I had two tiny children in New York City and that nearly killed me so um, I'm relieved what are the what's the breakdown of your kids so two kids how old are they um, my oldest just turned seven and then I have a four and a half year old so <laughs> it's two and a half years apart yeah which meant that like while the oldest was still in a stroller, I had the baby strapped to me, carrying both of them up and down the subway stairs in the snow. No, and I, I couldn't recommend that less. Yeah, I barely wanted to enough. do it by myself. So right, no. right, it was no fun. Yeah, it's, so I'm I'm glad to be here, and it's a relief. But I do miss New York. Well, it will always be here for you when you come back. Okay, so it's not. It will thrive That's and it will survive. Good to know but it's here. Amazing. Good. Okay. That's a comfort. Thank you. I, I um, can't believe you started COVID. Anyway, <laughs> let's, get into, <laughs> let's get into the big mom three because you're a bi-coastal lady. So I think you're going to have some interesting thoughts and answers. Um, and if you don't, I've, I've set you up for failure and I'm really sorry. Um, first question of big mom three, did you always know you wanted to be a mom? No. Um, there was a period of time uh, bah, 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 right around when I turned 30 when I would, uh, I started waking up, uh, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, you have to pee and I'd, I'd wake up and I had this like, like, where is the baby? Like where there's something missing, like in the house, in the bathroom, in the uterus there was like that moment where I'd be sitting there going something is missing in here it's those like moments in the middle of the night when you are sort of your most honest self with yourself yeah. where you're like like I need to stop eating so much right before bed yeah. it was like that <laughs> it's like one of those like come to Jesus moments whoever you know bless her um where I was just like there's, there's something that is missing here and and I could also feel and I'm not kidding, a throbbing in my uterus yeah, of like yearning. I don't think that's, that. I think that's me. real. 
I like, it's funny. I found yeah. someone yesterday and she had a very similar, like I hit this age and all of a sudden I was like, I need to have a baby. Yeah. And, and I, from what I understand, it's hormonal. It's our bodies seeing men of pre-menopause coming down the pike and going, what's the plan okay. here, girl? Like, are yeah. you going to do this? I use it or like, lose it. Kind of. And I kind of hate that because also we're in like an amazing age of science where we can do whatever the fuck we want. Thank yes. God. Um, but, but I think just it was my body was talking to me, you know? Yeah. And like when your body talks, like, listen, you know, it's tough. Yeah. Though. I mean, sometimes my body wants like an entire bottle of wine and That's I'm nice. like, shut up body. That's not helpful. <laughs> but some, you know, honor, honor your body. <laughs> you, <do everything. laughs> you gotta do it. By the way, totally. this water bottle, like I said, it is, it's offensive. It's really big. That's like, that's some it's LA shit. <laughs> I actually got this in New York. I was just about to be like, that's a bougie LA water bottle. You spilled it on yourself and this it's from is, New York. This is, wow. This is Walter. Right. He's Walter. Oh, yeah. And um, I am, I am struggle in the self-care department. So uh, this, this is the only reason that I drink water. Other than that, it would just be coffee. I like it. I have this guy. It's pretty. Very pretty, so I keep it. Oh, that's way less bougie than mine. It's cool. It's trees. It's trees, and it's from Amazon. It was like twelve. You look bucks. like you look like the wife of a doula now. Well, good news, I am. So, how about them apples? Uh, all right, let's get into the second question of the Big Mom Three. And I, I mean, I wrote it, but I also love this question. So, what is the shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice or like comment you've ever gotten from another mother or parent? Um, there was a period of time right after I moved to New York when, uh, I don't know if you've had this with your kid yet, but my son refused to have anything on his feet. He turns out he does have like a little bit of like a sensory thing where like textures and stuff like that yeah. is like a situation sometimes but this was before he was probably like a year and, and I would try to put shoes on him and he would just throw them out of the stroller so finally I was just like you know what we're gonna have cold feet and you know it was New York in the winter it was like five degrees but like we had to get out of the house otherwise we were gonna go crazy and I would get to this playground and they, they, there were these like Polish women who would super shame me I mean it was so they'd be like where are his shoes like like come up into my face and uh I was like and I literally one day I said to this woman I was like if you would like to put his shoes on him please go ahead like they won't stick you know um and I remember like at the time I was really I felt really alone my husband was shooting this movie he was gone all the time and I was just like, I can't even get my ladies back up in me. Like, I can't even, like, where are my people? You know, it was awful. Um, so I still, and I still kind of feel guilty. About the shoes. About the lack of shoes. No. It was cold. Well. You know, like, cold, cold. I do. Like, toddlers, they do whatever the fuck they want. Totally. I, it's do. like, I, and I, and at the time I was like, this it's a good lesson for him. Like he'll learn. He, he'll, he's going to be cold. That's just the way it's going to go. You well, know? like anything. Like, so my daughter, she'll be two um, this month. So like, I know crazy, but like, she's in a food throwing stage. And my wife is like, when is she going to get past the food throwing? And I keep saying when she gets past it, like there's no rhyme or reason mm-hmm. to it. She likes the food. She knows how to use a fork and a spoon. And then sometimes she gets so excited that she's like, boom. And she throws the thing totally. all over the place. Eventually, she's not going to do I mean, that. I have to tell you, like, my kids, my kids don't throw food anymore. Because they grew out of it. It doesn't happen. No. Yeah. I, but they wear shoes now, too. <laughs> well, maybe they understand now, the reason. in LA, so they don't need them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I understand the logic of like, we could wear shoes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So exactly. don't worry about those Polish bitches, please. Thank you. Okay. And by the way, I love 
Polish people. It wasn't I'm about Polish, that, but they did have very no. thick accents. Yeah. Well, listen, as, as the it. granddaughter of a Holocaust surviving Polish woman, fuck them. Don't worry about it. Yeah, please. Nasty. You hear that? You hear that, Poland? This hear is the kind of validation. Where were you? <laughs> I was Where in New York back then. I was right here. I needed you. I know. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Now you know that I'll just, I got you. All right. Third question, the big one three. Uh, what is a skill or superpower you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom? <clears throat> All right. I'm going to take this question to the next level. Do it. Because the pro, here's the thing. It's my superpower is also my kryptonite. So what it is, is like, I have an extremely high tolerance for pain and discomfort and exhaustion, (laughs) which means that I'm like, I'm like a powerhouse. I'm like a workhorse. Like I will go and go and go and go. And then I will be obliterated and like, can't stop crying. and don't know why and get depressed and like just fall asleep, like sitting up and it's like maybe borderline not safe. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I, I and, do. and it's something I've, yeah, I've always had it. Like I've always been very much like I work myself to the point of exhaustion, but and it's been very helpful. It was great. Like in the years when no one was sleeping, I was like, go, let's go, you know? And I, I almost like get off on it a little bit where I'm like, you know, yeah. watch this five but days then, no yeah I mean like you know 40 minutes here 20 minutes there you know what I mean like yeah. and it's why I was a good doula because like I'm like let's do an induction let's go I'm here you know um but I do have to say like as I'm as I'm getting a little bit older and starting to see that pattern I'm realizing I need to chill the f out because um like, I'm just going to fall over one day. Like, it's, yeah. I'm, it's the quality of life is starting to be sacrificed, you know? Right. And you like, right, you know, if you like recognize that. it, though, you can do something about it. So that's good, at least. This is where I am. This is where, yeah. and part of that was moving to LA because I was like, I, I want a car. Like, I need a car. Getting, going to pick up my children in a car and putting them into a car seat and driving home. It used to be like, you know, and it was like um, almost a mile to walk to pick up my son from school. And then, and I would do it in the rain and the snow and the flush and the, you know, and there and back with the baby strapped to me with one or both of them screaming. It's a nightmare. No. It's a nightmare. Nightmare. Mm-mm. Nightmare. No, mm. wouldn't. Listen, we're, we're all Long Island. So we're like 30 minutes outside of the city. I would never live in the city with kids ever and like god whoever bless whoever can do it not me yeah can't do it. i can't believe that we've been talking for this long and you're just now telling me this because i was picturing you in like a hovel in chelsea like ho- like hardcore <laughs> no no i'm in i'm here bougie ass long island like me. oh that you are so smart and yeah, please. So am I. Yes. We men. We're, we're very bright. Look at us. We're we're like glowing. We're so bright. Look it's at incredible us. Incredible. Yeah. And stunning. <laughs> um. Listen. Speaking of glowing, look at this like layup I've given myself. You were a, a freaking doula, so like the glow of pregnancies. Where I was like, oh look, glowing pregnancy. It's a terrible segue, but I do want to talk about it because I'm it great. It's not great. <laughs> it's not, it's not my best. I've had better, but you know, I'm, I'm living like my bougie lifestyle. So it's like hard to get on the fly now. I'm not as cool, you know? Um, but this sort of blew my mind. Uh-huh. Like I said to you, before we started filming, my wife and I, when we're like, what should we watch? We put on how I met your mother. We have seen you on our TV so many times that it's like, it's a probably, it's not, it's honestly like a little bit embarrassing because we get upset every time that you come on. And then every time it like, It all goes down and every time we're all surprised and we're like, I can't. And then he ended up with Robin. Like we're all pissed off about it. You know, the worst. I know. I know. I was robbed. You were robbed. Victoria was robbed. Victoria was robbed. Mm -hmm. The mother was robbed. Everyone was robbed and I was robbed. But before you did this, 
you were a doula, which is like insanity. So like how well, what's you- funny is it didn't it wasn't really that it didn't go in that order. Okay. Tell me the order. Basically, tell me, like I tell me about your life. I'll tell you go the on. order. Go. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Please tell me what so happened. I okay, yeah, what happened was I was an actress my entire childhood. I was a child actress. I was on soap operas and stuff like that. And then I went to theater school and I graduated and I moved to LA and I started doing sitcoms and comedy and all this stuff. And then I did the first season of How I Met Your Mother. Um, And it was amazing and it was great. And then, and the whole time I'm like, "Um, am I the mother? Like I was (laughs) guys, guys, like it really would make sense for me to be the mother. And um, yeah, like let's just call it, you know? And what's funny is I found out much later that the show was on the bubble and would have might have possibly been canceled. Yeah. And so they um their plan was to make Victoria the mother if the show had gotten canceled in that first season. Um so I was more right than I knew because I was just sort of like aspirationally like I kept bringing in baked goods and being like, I mean, this is what mothers do and she's a baker anyway. And like, let's, you know, um, anyway, it didn't work. Uh, the show was a smashing success. And then, um, about a year went by at one point, like a couple of years from then when I couldn't get a job as an actress, which totally happens all the time. But <clears throat> my agent dropped me and I was like, okay, like what's, what's like part two of Ashley's life, you know? And right around that time, my sister had gotten pregnant and uh, was really uncomfortable in her pregnancy, obviously. She was really overdue. And so I flew to Tennessee to just hang out with her for her the like last stages of her pregnancy. And she ended up going into labor and I was in the room and I did not like how the hospital treated her. And I came home and said to my now husband, we've been together for like 20 years. I said, um, I don't think I want to have a baby. Um, I think we should adopt or maybe reconsider or, you know, like just, I just don't ever want to go through that. And he said, well, you know, there's these things called doulas who are like um, kind of like ambassadors for the wishes of the mom and they like help protect the partner, you know, from, you know, and, and involve the partner. And he was the one that told me all about it. I was like, the what? So I know, well, he's amazing. So then I ended up watching the business being born and was really inspired. And one of my best friends is a midwife. So I did my doula train. I was like, I, and I literally, like, as soon as I heard about doulas, I was like, oh, I think I'd be really good at that. <laughs> That's, what, like, that's okay. what happened to my wife. We had a doula for our first daughter. And then she was like, I'm going to do that. That's what I should be doing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Is, was your, has your wife ever been an actress? Yeah. Yeah. So this is my theory. Cause there's a really good, I think actresses make really good doulas because the core of it is, is about empathy and information. Right. So it's like where intellect and, and empathy meet. So I'm pretty good at sort of intuiting on a physical level, like where, you know, what, where the pain is, what might be causing it <clears throat> in labor. And then the beginning stuff is just all research. It's just, if that's, and that stuff I just eat for breakfast, like I just love it. So, um, so it was really good. So I did it for like five years, um, off and on, um, <clears throat> I attended 52 births, um, So it wasn't like full time, you know, it was like, I would do a month and then I would like, and then I ended up getting, starting acting again. Um, And also like, I wasn't, at the time doulas in LA weren't making what they are now. Um, So I, you know, like it's really kind of skyrocketed and there's a lot of like midwives who make the same amount the doulas make now, like it's kind of a different field. And at the time it was very much like pay what you can. And I was committed to helping like underprivileged women. Like I had a homeless woman who was a client and I was doing a lot of sort of like, because when I, once I started acting again, it wasn't as much about the money. It was about like the life experience. And then when I got pregnant, 
I had to tell the clients that I had, like, I can't do that. I was immediately like, I was like an exhausted pregnant person. And then I just could never figure out the scheduling stuff. Like once I, yeah. once I had a baby, it was like, I can't leave at two o'clock in the morning. Like I ha- like what, you know, like I can't do that. Oh. Um, it's, it's tough. It's a really tough thing. I mean, like, so sh- my wife was doing a little bit of, um, postpartum doula also, and we found that's actually like more difficult in our life than like being a birth doula, believe it or not. Really? Well, because like, so I work full time, believe it, this is not my full time gig. I know that's like super hard for everyone to believe, but like working full time, uh, you know, with our COVID baby, like there was no easy way to be like, okay, three days a week, you're going to go help this family 40 minutes out East for five hours. Like we just couldn't figure it out. So like, it's actually easier. And like, she'll, she'll phrase it. I'm stealing her phrasing, but she'll say like, it's easier for someone to step into my life for 24 hours than it is for that type of schedule. Plan it. Yeah. Interesting. Dang, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. My mother in law also lives like six minutes away. So that doesn't hurt either. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's amazing. That's the answer. That, that, yeah. That is that's literally incredible. the answer. That's the answer. But the scheduling is rough. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a passion thing. Yeah. You know, like you want to be at every birth and you want to get, you know, 110% every time. And like, it's just crazy. Totally. Totally. Crazy. Yeah. I also have to say, like, I got a little burnt out as a doula. Like I, it was hard. It was a hard, it was hard, you know, like it, it stopped being as interesting because I did see a lot of injustice and, and it was frustrating, you know, the bureaucracy and the protocols and got tiring in the beginning. It felt like a game. Like, mm-hmm. how can I, how can I work around this? And I've, got tricks and and then eventually I was just like god like this is just relentless you know you mean hospital care for pregnant women isn't top notch in the United States that's a crazy fact I think shocker that. shocker it's, I know it's awful. well and it's funny I also think like it's awful and I, and I also think like I had I don't know my my theories about all of it shifted as well like that, that I'm, and I'm not really proud of a lot of it. Like I found myself being like, uh, maybe just, maybe just get the C-section. Like, you know, as opposed to being like, you didn't want a C-section and I want to remind you and here, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. and I'm, I'm not proud of that stuff. And, and that was a moment for me where I was like, I think I might need a little break from this, you know? Well, it's good. It's, um, good you, it's good you recognized it, but it's cool that you do it or that you did it. Like, you know, yeah. you do it again. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the thing is, I bet you I'm, I also think I'd be a really good death doula. Really? That is something I cannot wrap my head around. Really? I think I would nail that. Why? First of all, my mom died a couple of years ago. And I think going through the experience of what I wanted was just this. Like, I just wanted people to hold space. Yeah, you know, and I would feel so um, honored to be able to do, give that back. You know, like I feel like I want to, yeah. I want to pay that back a little bit. And also, it's just grief is is more interesting to me right now than childbirth. Like, yeah, the ebb and the flow and the lifelong journey of grief, yeah. and how you a random year about will be. Shit. Yeah, yeah no. a random Tuesday will be could could be like super acute for no and then there's traumas and there's triggers and there's like I thought grief was kind of this finite thing and you process and you work it through but it's a lifelong thing and um and I just think I would be really good at like asking the questions and going for the journey you know what I mean that's amazing and it just sounds fascinating to me right now yeah that's amazing and also the the palliative care the palliative palliative care system in the United States feels just as broken to me as some of the labor and delivery um 
procedures in the United States. Like it's, it's a broken system. And, and I think knowing your rights and getting the paperwork in line and stuff is way more important than the minutia and the detail on that. Um, I think there's a real lack of information out there about it. And, and that's something I'm really passionate about too. That's so amazing. I mean, I don't even think people like a lot of people don't even know that exists. Like a lot of people don't know, like postpartum doulas exist, like death doulas exist. Right. People think like mm-hmm. doulas in the room sort of cheering you on. And there's all of these versions of it. That's incredible. I've never heard of right. being be like, I think I'd be good at this, but here's like a non crazy reason why, you know, like oh, really, you don't think it's crazy. That's no, I think your reasoning is beautiful. I think that makes so much sense. I do. I mean, maybe you feel crazy, but I think it's really, if you need anyone to be, if you need anyone to be, for me to be their desk doula, just put my info out there. Maybe I'm I'm starting my business Uh, right now. I'll be like, you know, Ashley Williams from How I Met Your Mother, Jim Gaffigan, do you want her to be your desk doula? And they'll be like, she wants to come sit bedside. She wants (laughs) to come hang out with you. Cool. They'll be like, I don't think I did have a, I did have a woman that I was her, um, she was I was her her doula and she was in the middle of a contraction and she like she like went in and she came up and I, we both opened our eyes at the same time and she goes oh how I met your mother That's <laughs> I, recognize you. I was like oh you poor thing I felt so bad this poor woman is like probably totally in her head now and you know and you didn't even have any baked goods for her that sucks no nothing. no nothing. or a happy ending nothing you had nothing for her you gave her shit <laughs> so what's next I mean death doula that's obviously check 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 but like <laughs> right on the horizon I can't wait that's what you moved back to California for that's incredible what a story. Well, started COVID. Yeah. So the big thing, <laughs> so proud. Um, yeah. The big thing I want to talk about is that I, I mentioned my sister earlier who I was there for her labor with her first child. And um, she and I were, have been working together on a pair of Hallmark movies where, in which we play sisters. So oh, they cool. are airing. Yeah. They're airing December 5th and December 12th on the Hallmark channel. And I'm super, 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 super proud of them. Um, they're kind of a really outside the box idea for Hallmark. And, uh, and I think people are gonna love them and they're Christmas, which is so fun. <laughs> Just so you know, my mother-in-law and my best friend's mother will watch every single Christmas Hallmark movie. You are about to become my mother-in-law's favorite person. December. Oh my gosh. She's going to lose her mind. Please reach it. out to her and all of her friends because oh, really? uh, we're, it's, it's really cool. It's a real idea. And, uh, and you know, a lot of times Hallmark movies center around a woman who's trying to find love and, you know, ends up finding it. Yeah. Um, and that, there is that element in these movies as well, but more than anything, the movies are about women showing up for each other and supporting each other, which is kind of a cool thing for Hallmark, um, and yeah. makes me really proud. Totally out of the box for Hallmark. That's amazing. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Thank Everybody you. keep an eye out. We'll obviously tag you so they can find you and watch everything. Um, let's start to yeah. wrap up because you have kids coming home and my kid is, I do. Who knows? Who knows what she's doing? I just left her alone. Yeah. I didn't. My wife. <laughs> That's um, fair. Can you imagine yeah. she's running around. She's fine. So I have two final questions. <laughs> oh, did you hear that little scream? I think it was a happy scream. I'm not sure. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> first of the two. So your kids are. Ooh, tell me the ages again. Five. Seven and four and a half. Seven and four and a half. So what at the moment at their current age? What is something? you cannot live without as a mom? Uh, 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 bunny snacks. Like Annie's homegrown bunny snacks? Us too. <laughs> they are the answer. To everything. To every, like, that's my, that's my bribery everything. thing right now. And that's, every variety oh, of That's them. what it is. They're all good. The oh, chocolate, yeah. The chocolate There's so many. Yeah. Birthday cake. 
Are they multicolored? Are they pink? Oh, yeah. What color are they? No, they're like a tannish kind of like regular vanilla cookie, but with like almost funfetti in them. Oh, I think, yeah, we, oh yeah, of course. I didn't know they were birthday cake. They're Honestly, birthday. I just order them. I just, I don't even look, I'm just like here, here, here. Yeah. Don't take them, yeah. Take them. Oh, that's a good answer. Yes, good. <laughs> Perfect. That's good. All right, final question. What is something you know now that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? Um, okay, this might not be a popular answer, but um, it's, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard. That's okay. Yeah, I have a girlfriend who, um, who, you know, was dealing with some infertility and stuff like that. And she has her baby now. She finally, she adopted this amazing kid. and She's so mad that no one told her <laughs> how hard it was going to be. And I was like, I have been trying to tell you for years. And she's like, right. But it's always like, it's so worth it. And listen, I don't have regrets. It is worth it. it yeah. It's so hard and it's, it's relentlessly hard. And I'm, um, there's a loneliness in it, you know, that, uh, that I really, I knew it would be hard, but I don't think I knew it would be this hard, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't have a regret. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that it's hard mostly because I, I can't believe I'm surviving it, you know, and that, yeah. that gives me hope, you know, for women, you know, like we are, we can meet the hardness, you know, and that is a relief. That's a good answer. And like, even if you told somebody the truth, the hundred percent truth, here's why it's so hard. Here's every part of my day. You're not going to get it. No, that is so smart. You're so right. <laughs> well, I'm, it's okay. impossible to really understand. And that used to drive me nuts before I became a parent when people would be like, you'll get it when you're a parent. And I was like, fuck that. Like, I understand. I didn't understand. Totally wrong. I didn't understand. You can't understand it until you're a parent and that's okay. That's okay. Right. I, right. I can say it. <laughs> well, listen, my uh, ex New York friend who's now living her California dreams. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Where can people follow you and find you and watch all of the cool stuff you're doing? Yes. Yes. So I am on Instagram. I am Ashley Williams and company, all one word and company, Ashley Williams and company. Um, I'm really bad on Twitter, uh, but it's, I'm the smash. And then uh, the movies are called sister swap um, airing on the Hallmark channel. We're going to be hashtagging hashtag sister swap. Um, and it's December 5th and December 12th on the Hallmark channel. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And thank you all for watching Shit Moms Won't Say. We'll see you next week.